I believe the Bible is the Word of God because it is perfect, line upon line, precept upon precept. I believe the Bible is the Word of God because no man could have written a standard this perfect and this high. I believe the Bible is the Word of God because it settles the issue. Internationally recognized for teaching, and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. What does this God do? What do you do when you've lost a son and you want him back in fellowship? What do you do when a child has stopped believing you but you are unwilling to give up on them? What, what do you do when a child has the wrong, uh, the wrong perspective on you and you cannot convince him or her that you are not what they think you are? You, 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 you develop a rescue plan. You, 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 you develop a rescue plan to try to convince them that I love you no matter what you've done and I love you no matter where you've been and it's not your disobedience that has caused our separation. It is the fact that no matter what I tell you, you don't believe me. And so... I'm almost done, and, and so the rescue project begins. Touch three people and say the rescue project begins. And, uh, and, and what religion has never told you, what, what church has never made clear enough to you is that the crucifixion is a rescue operation. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's an SOS. It's, it, it's a final call. Touch three people and say, it's a rescue operation. Uh, it's a rescue operation. And, uh, and to die and go to hell and say God sent you there would be like to drown when a rescue boat passed you by. And because it didn't look like the kind of boat you wanted to be saved in, you decided to drown rather than get in the boat. Touch three people and say, get in the boat, baby. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Get, 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 get in the boat. And, 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 and so, and so let, me, let me get to this real quickly because what the Hebrew writer does here in the verses that I read to you is he drops us in to the summation of the rescue project. And he begins to give us a picture of what God did to finish the rescue mission. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight, and tell him, Jesus is the finish of the divine rescue operation. No, 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 no. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, Jesus is the solution to the divine rescue operation. And I don't have time to debate the issue, but this is why Muhammad can't do this for you and Confucius can't do this for you and Buddha can't do this for you. Smart guys, yes. Saviors, no. Because they were not anointed to do the rescue. Touch three people and say, you had to be qualified. No, look at your neighbors. You had to be qualified to do the rescue, see? 
See, we, we, we live by these principles in the natural, but somehow when it comes to God, we want to do it the way we want to. If, if somebody robs your house, you can't just call the neighbors, get guns, and go after people. There's an agency for that. It's called the police. you got to call the police. Why do you think you can take matters into your own hands when it comes to your salvation? Grab your neighbor's hand and say, there's an agency for this. I, I, I'm almost done. I, I, I promise. I promise I am. So, so he dropped us in to the conclusion. It was, look at Hebrews chapter 9. For Christ has not entered the holy places with, with hands, made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to appear in the presence of God for us. Now what is he speaking to? He's speaking to the fact that under the temporary principles that God had established for man to have temporary relationship with him, he had, he had prescribed a methodology where the high priest in Israel would go into the Holy of Holies once a year with the blood of bulls and goats. And when he went in with the blood of bulls and goats, temporarily the shed of that blood would cover sin for another year. Now, why blood? Because something had to die. Because God had laid down the law. The soul that sins, it shall die. Something has to shed its blood. So God made a temporary, touch three people, say temporary, temporary. He made a temporary way for that fellowship to be temporarily restored. And so once a year, on what is called Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the high priest in Israel would take the blood of bulls and goats, and he would go back into the third dimension of the tabernacle. There was the outer court, the inner court, the Holy of Holies, and he would go into the Holy of Holies with the blood of the sacrifice. And if the blood was accepted according to the order and the principles that God had set down, the Shekinah glory of God would come down, receive the sacrifice, and for one more year, temporarily, touch three people say, temporarily, for one more year, temporarily, the, 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 the sin of the nation, of the people, would be put away. And so the Hebrew writer is telling us here that Jesus, after he had shed his blood, did not go into the holy of holies made with hands, which was a copy of the true, but he went into heaven itself with his own blood. Are you still here? I said, are you still here? The Bible tells us that our high priest went into the holy of holies in heaven. And after he had purged our sins with his own blood, he sat down down at the right hand of God. Now, if you don't any, know anything about the temporary method, then that permanent method doesn't impact you the way it should. But in the holy of holies on earth, there was no seat for the high priest to sit down in. And the reason there was no seat is because he would have to come back the next year and do it again. So there was no seat because the work was never finished. But the Bible says when Jesus had purged our sins with his own blood, he went into the Holy of Holies in heaven and sat down. Touch your neighbor and say, he sat down. The fact that he sat down was a testimony to heaven and earth, to demons and devils, that the work had been finished and sin had been completely taken out of the way. Touch three people and say this sin issue was the key issue of separation. Now watch this. I'm almost done. It says, look at verse 26. It says he would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now once at the end of the ages he has appeared. Look at your neighbor say he has appeared to put away sin. Everybody say to put away sin. Now notice it's not just to forgive it. It's not just to forgive it. It is to put it away. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you, 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 you didn't get it. It's not just to forgive it. And see, we, we, have, we have done you an injustice. 
I'm talking about us preachers. We have done you an injustice. We have preached to you only the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus on the resurrection side of an empty grave did not say that forgiveness of sins should be preached. He said remission of sins should be preached. And forgiveness and remission are not the same thing because you can forgive a thing and still think about it. But when you remit a thing, you annihilate it. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. And tell them the good news is that your sins have not just been forgiven. They have been absolutely annihilated. They have been deleted. They have been put out of the way. They have been removed from the conversation between you and God. There is no need to discuss them. Touch your neighbor and say, this is the gospel. This is the real deal. This is it. Your sins have not been forgiven, only they have been remitted. This is not a situation where the case against you has merely been dismissed. This is a situation where there is no evidence that there was ever a case against you. The prosecutor can't find it. The investigators can't find it. The private eyes can't. God made Jesus your atoning victim. He made him do your time. You did the crime. He did the time. Do you know how your status as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ should be fully impacting your life, your family, and even your neighborhood? You can be the only saved one in your house. Your salvation alone is enough to bring the entire house under protection, the entire house under blessing. Do you fully understand what your covenant rights in Christ Jesus have given you? Here's what Jesus said. If there's one believer in that house, the blood of that covenant covers that whole house. In the series, When Salvation Hits Your House, You'll find the answers to these questions and so much more as Bishop McClendon expounds on this subject matter in great detail. Understand the authority you have to speak over your children and even your spouse, how the covenant we have with God is able to affect your family over the next 42 generations. Log on to bishopmcclendon.com to place your order today. chapter 3 verse 23 I'm almost done he said you said that 10 minutes ago now I'm telling the truth hallelujah here's the magnificent thing about it and this oh children please hear me this is the beauty this is the beauty of the crucifixion and the resurrection this is the majesty of it this is why every time I look at it I'm absolutely amazed I, I, I'm amazed. Let me tell you why I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I believe the Bible is the Word of God because it is perfect, line upon line, precept upon precept. I believe the Bible is the Word of God because no man could have written a standard this perfect and this high. I believe the Bible is the Word of God because it settles the issue. And here is one of the points that every time I look into it, and I tell you, I'm not trying to, to get you to become emotional, but it makes me emotional when I think about not only that God did it, but he did it so perfectly. He, he did it so exactly. He did it without breaking any of his own rules. Are you still here? Look at your neighbor and say, he didn't make any shortcuts. He didn't. He didn't cut any corners. Look, look, at, look, at, look, look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Am I doing all right? Somebody said, you're doing all right, but I wish you'd get done. I'm, I'm almost finished. Watch. Uh, I got to take a minute because some of you I won't see again until next year. Come on, let me talk to you. No, let me not say that. That's a bad confession. I'll see you again. Oh, robo shandaramaka. Watch this. 
Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23. I'm almost done. Now I want you to see, I want you to see this. I want you to see this, and I want you to see how it is written because we've even quoted it wrong. Romans 3 and verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now notice how we quote this. We quote, all have sinned and fallen short. That's the way we quote. That's the way I was raised quoting it. That's the way preacher, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The problem with that is it puts both of these actions in the past. And that's not the way it is written. It is written, all have sinned, past tense, and fall short, present tense, of the glory of God. In other words, your sinning is in the past, but your falling short isn't. Oh, I wish I had time to explain this in all of its entirety. Uh, He says, all have sinned in the past, but even the ones who have come to Christ still fall short of the glory of God, which is why it is important for you to understand that you will never find a perfect church full of perfect people. And if you do find it, don't join it. You're in heaven already. Because on this earth, you will never find a group of perfect people. You will find a group of people who have a past life of sin and a present life of still falling short of all the standards. But they are trusting, not in their own selves, but in the fact that the blood of Jesus. Let me, just let me read a little Bible to you. in Alaborisha. And I'll be done. I'll be done. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God set forth as the propitiation. Now this word propitiation is a magnificent English word. It's an old English word. We don't use it anymore. Uh, But it actually means, watch this, it actually means the atoning victim. It is the Greek word hilasterion. Interestingly enough, it is the same Greek word that is translated mercy seat. I don't have time to get into that typology, but it's magnificent. In other words, he has made him the propitiation, meaning the atoning victim. What do you mean? It means that in the crucifixion, God made Jesus the atoning victim for all of our sins. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24 that he made him that knew no sin. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He made him that knew no sin to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God. In other words, on the cross, touch three people, say on the cross. Say it again, on the cross. See, here it is. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. He becomes the atoning victim. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. Tell him, here's the rule. Here's the rule. The soul that sins, it must die. That's the rule. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Say, here's the rule. It is appointed unto men once to die, and after that, the judgment. Or after that, a determination is made about it. That's the rule. So what does God do? He loves you and I so much that he selects an atoning victim. He says somebody has to die. But since I don't want everybody to die, I need somebody who will die for everybody else. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight, tell them this is the gospel. Here it is. That God made Jesus your atoning victim. He made him do your time. You did the crime. He did the time. Look at your neighbor and say, who wouldn't take a deal like this? Grab your neighbor's hand and say, who wouldn't take a deal like this? So he makes Jesus the atoning victim. He lays upon him my sin and your sin. Somebody has to die. But touch three people and say, it's not going to be me. 
because Jesus did it for me. So he devises another way without breaking any of his own rules. Somebody has to do it. So Jesus does it. Oh, oh, I'm almost done with it. Go to Isaiah 53 verses 5 and 6. Oh, I'm almost finished. Isaiah 53 verses 5 and 6. Go there quickly. Put it up on the screen. It says this, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement, the payment in full, the rebuke for our peace was laid on him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so when Christ dies with my sin on him and my sickness on him, when he dies paying the price for my sin, the scripture declares that it is appointed unto man wants to die and after that a determination is made see see judgment is a scary word to Christians it just means a determination so the judgment of God is just when God makes a decision about a thing it is appointed unto man once to die and after that a decision is made so watch what happens Jesus dies with my sin and your sin and he dies and deals with it so fully. Having borne my sin and yours on the cross, having died with it, and then being put in the tomb, that God looks at his death, and the Bible says that he sees the labor of Jesus' soul for my sin and yours and is satisfied. One of the greatest things I can tell you is the moment you come to Jesus Christ from that day every morning when you get up you will wake up to a satisfied father you will wake up to a father that is not waiting on you to perform some act of goodness in order to receive his goodness every morning when you rise the moment you come to Christ Jesus you wake up with a God who is smiling at you not because of what you have done but because you have believed in his atoning victim are you still in the building watch this Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. He says, he has laid upon him the iniquity of us all so that sin has been forever dealt with. It has been forever put away, restoring fellowship and access to and for all those who believe in the one who paid. From time to time, I travel quite a bit. And from time to time, we will go to an airport and we'll have uh, a layover. You know, catching one plane from another plane. Sometimes on international flights when we have to go preach the gospel in other nations, those layovers are, 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 are four or five hours. And so, because I have been flying so many years, and I do it so much, I've accumulated a whole lot of miles on certain carriers. And, and because I fly so much, and this has happened to me so frequently, I, I have earned miles in some cases, in, in other cases I pay for access to a club or a lounge where I can go in and sit, have a cup of tea, wait for the plane so I don't have to, you know, sit out in the airport. You know, I can lay down. Some of them have showers in them and other things. You still there? And, and I'm the one generally who has done the paying. But I'm always traveling with people. I always have two or three people traveling with me because I don't travel anywhere by myself. The Lord told me not to do that years ago, especially when I'm going to preach the gospel. 
And so, and so from time to time, I'll have to go in to one of the clubs and my men will be with me. And they'll check to see if I have paid the price to enter. They'll take my card, they'll take my number, and they'll say, oh yes, Dr. McClendon, we see you here. You're on the list. Your name is written. And the moment that they see that my name is written, their disposition changes. Oh, c come on in. Come on in, sir. Come on, come on in, Dr. McClendon. Welcome. Well, they didn't say welcome. But because my payment also gives me access to bring some other people in with me, Because they're with me and I paid the price, they get access to the club without having to pay because they're with me. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. Look at your neighbor and say, this is how this gospel works. You don't have to pay for the access to the Father. Jesus has paid for the access. And as long as you're with him, as long as you're believing in him, as long as you're trusting in him, you get all the benefit without having to pay the price. Touch your neighbor and say you get all the benefits without having to pay the price. Look at your neighbor and say this is why once you come to Christ, your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Do you know how your status as a born-again believer in Jesus Christ should be fully impacting your life, your family, and even your neighborhood? You can be the only saved one in your house. Your salvation alone is enough to bring the entire house under protection the entire house under blessing. Do you fully understand what your covenant rights in Christ Jesus have given you? Here's what Jesus said. If there's one believer in that house, the blood of that covenant covers that whole house. In this series, When Salvation Hits Your House, you'll find the answers to these questions and so much more as Bishop McClendon expounds on this subject matter in great detail. Understand the authority you have to speak over your children and even your spouse. How the covenant we have with God is able to affect your family over the next 42 generations. Log on to bishopmcclendon.com to place your order today.